Imagine what the world will look like in 50 or 100 years. I'm talking about a world that, you know, without poverty, without war, without starvation. I'm talking about a world where we have awesome technologies such as fusion power or with teleportation, where you just push a button and you get teleported from Bratislava to a beach in Thailand within just a fraction of a second. But only we humans can do such things, right? I've never seen a monkey explain fusion power. We have to unleash human potential and, and use it accordingly. But even, even though human potential is huge, it's probably beyond any imagination of, of one single individual, we have to educate people, for without education there can be no progress. So, education is really the foundation of the next generation, of the economy of the future. Think about how every 6 to 18 year old person right now will one day, let's say in 30 years, be part of a generation ranging from 36 to, to 48. And that's a whole generation of managers, politicians, scientists and engineers. People being in charge of projects, companies, enhancing all our lives, keeping the planet sustainable and, and shaping the world hopefully for the good of all of us. I tell you, nothing is impossible. But we need the right foundation. So let me tell you about the education system of the 21st century. I think there's already a revolution going on in education as computers and the internet are becoming an extension of the human mind, the human brain. One person with a computer and internet has more knowledge available than all 7 million people combined just without technology, right? That's an extraordinary thing if you think about it. Just 30 years, um, nobody would have thought that would happen. So, I've been thinking a lot about how we could improve the education system because I do not think that such progress is, is happening at, at schools uh, all around the world. This is an IB school, it's a bit of an exception, but I'm referring to general schools. So, I started writing an article about this whole issue and, and collaborated with people from all over the world, from Malaysia to Austria and the US to Tokyo, well, Japan. And I can't present to you the whole article, but let me present to you three of the main ideas that I or we have come up with. The first thing is about the system itself and uh, how we apply technology. Basically, 12 years of school are supposed to prepare us for 40 or 50 years of, of our careers, right? But I personally believe, and, and many people share that belief, such as uh, Sir Ken Robinson, that you just saw the, the RSA animation, um, that we are much more preparing students for the past and the present rather than the future. Um, the, the thing is really, we're putting children in classes of 20 to 30. They spend the next four years in that one class. They have one schedule of, of subjects that only vary a bit. Again, this is IB, but generally. We give them homework, which they copy, and we, 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 we teach them how to answer questions on exam papers. But, however, and I think luckily, children's needs, talents, interests, and especially their talents are uh, so different, so individual. About 50 years ago, we didn't have the resources to, to actually provide an individual education for every single child, but today we do have the resources. We really do have the resources. We have computers, we have internet, and I'm sure many of you have heard about the Khan Academy, where one guy makes videos, I think uh, until now about 3,000 videos about history, science, math, and all that. He uploads it to YouTube, and it gets like millions and millions of views. That one person alone brings more education to people than, than a thousand teachers combined. That is the future. Let's provide uh, students with electronic courses instead of boring lessons. Um, rather than having um, a lesson, we can have 
an e-course that is very much like a computer game. And they actually did that about a month ago at my school, where they uh, implemented that one computer game where you're the leader of a country and you have to allocate resources accordingly and try to turn your country in, into a sort of paradise, utopia. You wouldn't imagine how many children play that game and, and how seriously they take it. There's a competition going on and suddenly children actually read books, they do research and all that, just to become better at that game. And I believe that within a week, children can learn more about economics than in an entire year. That is the future. About a couple of months ago, I started a project at my school, the Syndicate Student Project, where we are connecting all students of the school with a, with a clouding platform so that they can work together and share their experience. It's, it's very much like a learning platform. And I hope that at some point in the future, I'm not sure when it's going to be, Students will not have to actually write things down in class anymore, but they will have an interactive class. They will have an interactive experience in class with only the teacher writing a protocol and then uploading it to the clouding system that can be accessed by, by all the students. That is the future. The second thing is about languages. Um, mankind can only reach goals such as world peace together as one human race. We can do it individually. So we need to take human cooperation and communication to a whole new level. I doubt that in an advanced society or let's say an alien civilization, there would still be language barriers. We need all seven billion people to be able to share their opinions, knowledge, expertise, spread their ideas that are worth spreading um, with all other seven billion people on this planet. So we need a universal language, and right now this universal language is English, and I don't think that will change in the future. So basically what I'm saying is, uh, schools, again, this is IB, but schools in general should really focus on, on English. Raise the number of English lessons, for God's sake. Stop. I know I love languages. I've tried to learn up to nine languages throughout my life, and languages are part of, of culture, but, but then again, second languages do not, do not bring that sort of benefit that we think, and they cause huge opportunity cost. So, this is part of, of human evolution, you know? I'm sure there, there's some German teacher out there that's all like, Aber Deutsch ist die wichtigste Sprache in Europa. <laughs> I'm, I'm very well aware of that. But we need to adapt to human evolution and prepare the next generation for the future. Not for the present, for the past. The third thing I want to talk about is um, motivation. Try to ask a couple of students what the purpose of school is. Um, I doubt you will get a constructive, smart answer. Really, I, I've tried that. We need to spark children's interests in subjects. We need to motivate them. And I think if we manage to really tell them what the purpose of learning is, why they're studying, why they have to learn that one chapter, why they have an exam about that and that, if they understand that, that is probably more important than everything else we can teach them because at a point where a child is interested in something and has internet, there's no way stopping the child. Alright? So, students, metaphorically speaking, are like a vessel lost in the ocean, in an ocean of facts and figures, not knowing where they're heading to. Give them a compass, show them the sun and the stars, give them a map and teach them how to navigate and they will find their way back home and then they will ask you how is the sun created or how does a compass work and why isn't the earth flat but don't do it the other way around it doesn't work so we have to find a way to to motivate students if you want students to be um, into physics for example 
show them videos of, of Michio Kaku. I'm, I'm sure that some of you know Michio Kaku. Um, children that, that have watched Michio Kaku's uh, uh, videos or movies and read his books, uh, those kids that still don't care about physics, they will probably never be a physicist. And we have to face that. So I'm proposing to introduce some sort of modular system where um, students can learn at their own individual pace, where students tutor themselves and each other, where the teachers only supervise students. We have technology, and we, we can do that. Um, if, we, if we manage to introduce this stuff, we will have much better education, much more progress. If, if the economy changed as much as the education system, I think we'd still not have computers. But I think we're seeing the beginning of, of a revolution. We're beginning to tap into the full extent of the human potential. Dream about a future uh, where we have no wars. Dream about a future with fusion energy. And dream about a future where we can travel between stars. Stop dreaming. It, it is very likely to become reality. We, we're responsible to, to change these things now, because if we don't, it will, it will backfire on us. So, governments, teachers, students, and experts unite. I call upon a revolution in the education system. Thank you.